Okay, so let's talk about automating Creo Parametric with Excel tables, a completely new thought process, which I think you're going to really like. The typical Creo automation. Why do most companies do this? First of all, they try to use the tools that PTC provides, either for free or they can purchase, for the purposes of automating user tasks and integrations with their business systems. These are very capable tools, but they do require development and Creo skills to be able to leverage those APIs. Nitrocell, on the other hand, had a different thought process, a much higher level thought process. So instead of getting down into the details of code, we've opted to try to focus on using an Excel workbook to basically automate the Creo process by using Excel commands to either execute things or collect data, perform batch operations, just whatever you can kind of think of. But what if it was possible to do something like this? What if we had functionality that allowed you to query information out of Creo and write that data back to a native Excel table. When you have information in a native Excel table, you can then do some other pretty cool things. Like for example, use that as an iterable reference for another command to go off and query some more information and write more data back also as a native Excel table. This ability to kind of chain information together opens up a very large set of possibilities for automation within Creo. So the new data workflow when you do this would basically be to use execute sheets just as you do right now within NitroCell to get, set, and execute transactions with Creo, but use Excel tables to augment that process. So you could actually write data from Creo to an Excel table. You could also perform Power Query operations to transform or augment or merge that data in some way, and then write back another table that can then be passed into Creo is the form of instructions for how things need to be updated or put together or whatever you want to do. So Creo and Excel tables really does kind of introduce a new thought process. And that process is to be able to have your Creo tasks go back and forth between Excel like we do now, but also allow you to focus on the data tasks, meaning whatever I'm pulling from Creo, I want to put in a format within Excel that's very friendly for doing other operations like with Power Query to pull in other data sources, to augment it, to modify it, and then push it back. So the new workflow basically would look like this for most users. You collect inputs like you would any other Excel document, or you could import those in using an external reference like a CSV file or something. Once those inputs are there, NitroCell can go in and perform get, set, or execute transactions with Creo and to pull data back in the form of the status of things or the current values of things. Once that data is back in Excel in a tableized format, you can then read or transform that with Power Query very easily, and then load the results back into Excel, and then populate those changes back into Creo if you need to, and then perform whatever operations also need to be done on the backside of that for outputting results. So the automation workflows with native Excel tables basically kind of works like this. Request data from Creo and populate the columns and the rows of the Creo data and then use just native Excel Power Query to transform that data and then repopulate a new table uh, back into Excel. This can then be read as an editable reference to make modifications back into Creo to set or perform executions in some way. So to give you a little bit of an example of how that might work, you can actually use NitroCell commands to, for example, create a table using the workbook object and you can just create tables wherever you want in the Excel workbook. It really doesn't matter. It's a, it's a named reference that is going to be generic. Once you've done that, you can then come in and say, I want to use another command to populate that table. And you'll notice here that depending on the command that you're using, it will automatically structure that table with the correct columns that's needed to fill the data out that it's retrieving for you. As an added bonus, you can also use tables and chain them together. So I could take the file names table and use it as a reference so that I only get the information that's in the files name table versus just whatever's in session. After you've done this, you can actually use Power Query to create a connection. And then let's say we wanted to just update or replace values that end there. So if we wanted to do a find or replace, it'd be very easy to do with Power Query. We could get a new table that has our updated values. And then it's just a matter of setting that back into Creo as another command. So when this is completely finished, with just a handful of commands, you can set up a very generic automation to perform these operations. Now let's go take a look at this in Creo and see how it works. The first thing we want to do is we want to create a table to write the list of files that are currently in session. So I'm going to do a table create 
using the worksheet function or the worksheet object. And we'll call this file names. And I'm going to put this on wow tab. Now let's go get the list of files that are currently in session. So do a get files. We want to use the table application option here. And I want all the PRT files to go to that table that we're going to create. So when I run this, it's going to create the tab for me because it doesn't exist, create the table for me because it doesn't exist, and populate this out. And we can see here that the name of it is file name. So now let's go do the same thing again, except for the parameters. So we'll call this file params. I'm going to stick that on the same tab. And let's also come in and do a table parameter get function. In this case, we could just query, we could we could put in a star.prt if we wanted to, but I'm gonna put in TBL file names. And the reason for that is I want to basically, if I had any operations that made changes to the content that was written here, I'd wanna reference that. So I'm referencing this, whatever the status of that table is and its content as an input to this. And then I want uh, INS for my for my parameter names that we're going to get, and we're going to pass that off to file parameters. So when I run this, you'll see that when this connects up to Creo, it's going to step through each of these processes. And because we have those table creates there, it's not going to create the tables again, but it will clear them because they already exist. So there we are. So let's take a look here. So we've got we've got our file. What is this? File names, and we also have file paramps. Now, let's say that we wanted to come in and alter some of the, do like a find replace on some of these values. Well, to do that, let's jump into Power Query. To do that, you go up to Data, and you make sure your cursor is in the table you want to work from, and we'll say From Table Range, and then we'll pull up Power Query here, and we'll call this Update. This is going to be the name of the query that we're modifying here. So. If I come in and we say, you know, I want, I, I really want to filter this down to, well, let's see if we can find something with a couple more. So let's fill, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna filter this value here. We're gonna copy this and do a replace values on anything that's in that column. And we're going to, let's say, make it, well, let's do 1S999901, just so it's fairly obvious. And that's all we're going to do. So basically what this is doing is it's it's going to take the source of whatever the table is that we're working with. It's going to do a little bit of cleanup on the data types. It's going to filter the rows that we've asked it to. And it's going to replace the values. And then I'm just going to save this down to Excel. So we'll say keep these results. And here's our new table that we are going to. These are basically the changes that we need to uh, put into our model here. So um, in order to make that work, I'm going to add in a refresh all. This basically tells Excel to refresh all the connections. So as we're reading through here, it's going to create tables, get the files, clear or create the table, and then get the parameters. And then we have that Power Query step that we just defined. So it's going to refresh all that stuff to make sure it's accurate. So if our content changes over here, it'll automatically adjust for that. And then the last step is to set those parameters. So the name of that table that we were working with here, let's see what we have. So we have the parameters update. So we'll put in, uh, that is the name of the table that we want to process. And then maybe as a final step, we'll just do a regenerate. And we can actually do a table regenerate. So this will process, this will force a regeneration on all the models that were updated. So when we run this, you could see here that it's looping through all that process and it just completed it. So if we go and check, for example, the spider, and uh, let's take a look at the parameters for the spider here. And we should see that uh, if we sort this correctly, it did in fact make that change. So that's just a quick example of how to do a very simple automation with tables in NitroSol.